So what is a moment generating function when we're talking about random variables? And let's think about moments. We know the equation for the first moment, which is the expected value of the random variable. If we have a random variable x, that equals the integral from negative infinity to infinity of x times the PDF of x dx. So this is our equation for the mean, the first moment. And of course we have second moment, which is the expected value of x squared, and so on. Uh, for all the higher order moments is the expected value of x to the higher powers. Uh, and this, of course, uh, written in terms of an equation in terms of the probability density function. So you can calculate all of these moments using the probability density function. So what is the moment generating function? Well, it's another function which actually allows you to generate all of these more directly than calculating these integrals. So let's uh, look at its definition. Uh, we have the moment generating function, which we use capital M, uh, and then we put subscript X for the random variable X, and it's a function of a variable T. And this is defined as being the expected value of E to the T X, where, for the, where X is, of course, again, the random variable. So here we have uh, a relationship uh, which uh, is similar here. We've got the expectation of a function of x. This was x and x squared and so on. And the function of x here is e to the tx. And so we can calculate this the same way as uh, using the by directly with the formula of expectation. So we can integrate from negative infinity to infinity of e to the tx times the PDF of x dx and we can calculate this function. So why is it that this function is called the moment generating function? Well, let's look at this function here and, and realize that we have an expansion for this equation e to the tx. And let me write out that expansion as a series expansion. So we've got, it also then equals the expectation of, and let me write the expansion now. So this is equal to one plus tx, plus t squared x squared divided by 2 factorial plus t cubed x cubed divided by 3 factorial and so on. And so this is a direct series expansion of e to the tx. And now we start to see how this function here can be written in terms of the moments because if I take the expectation inside then we've got 1 plus t e of x plus t squared divided by 2 factorial of e of x squared plus t cubed divided by 3 factorial e of x cubed and so on. I have to fit the dot dot dots in there. Uh, so this is an infinite series and you can see that each term in this series is one of includes one of the moments. So this term here includes the first moment, the mean, this one the second moment and so on. And so actually, we can now should be able to see that we can calculate each of these moments. So not only is the moment generating function made up of each of these moments, but we can calculate these moments if we know what this function is by taking the derivative of this function and then setting t equal to zero. So if we want the first moment, we would take the first derivative uh, and then set t equal to zero. So let me see what happens then. Then this in the first derivative, this uh, disappears. This becomes, that t just simply becomes e of x. This becomes uh, 2 times t divided by 2 factorial times this. But then when you set t equal to 0, uh, this term disappears. And the same thing here, you'd have 3t squared divided by 3 factorial times this. But when you set t equal to 0, this one disappears. So if you've taken one derivative, you will be left with, when you set t equal to zero, you'll be left with just e to the x. When you take a second derivative, this term would then disappear, uh, and then you would have uh, this term here with a single t with, with a, to the power of one in the second derivative, and then when you set t equal to zero, uh, you, sorry, this t would disappear in the second derivative, and you'd have this one here uh, disappearing and so on. So let's see an example of that. So let's look at the Gaussian. So if you had a Gaussian, uh, so mx of t for the Gaussian, uh, 
uh, so the Gaussian equals uh, e to the t mu uh, plus one half sigma squared t squared. So this is the moment generating function for a Gaussian with a mean of mu and a variance of sigma squared. So let's take the first derivative of this and see if we can get the, the mean. So d uh, m x t uh, dt equals, well, this is you have to do this by parts. So this would equal uh, mu e to the t mu uh, time, um, plus, uh, or oh, let me make it into two components here, make this probably easier to see, sigma squared t squared. So this is, uh, I've put the expectation, uh, divided this into two terms, or, or put exp exponential of this uh, times exponential of this, uh, and then we take the derivative of the first term holding the second term, and then we take the derivative of the second term. So to e to the t mu um, times sigma squared t times e to the half sigma squared t squared. So this is the first derivative of that term, and then when we set it equal t equal to zero, when the t equals zero of this term, uh, then you can see this term here will disappear because there's a t in here. So this term disappears when you set t equal to zero. Uh, and this term here, you've got e to the zero, which equals one, and e to the zero, which equals one. So you've got one times mu. And so the first derivative, uh, when you set t equal to zero, gives you mu. Now you can do the same thing for the second derivative, and you'll see that the, it gives you the second uh, function, which equals, so this if this is d squared mxt uh, dt set t equal to zero, we'll give you a term here, which you can uh, find for yourself, which equals mu squared plus sigma squared. And this is the expected value of the second, it's the second moment, the expected value of x squared. Uh, and so from the moment generating function, here's the procedure to generate all the moments. And finding the moments this way is, in for many PDFs, uh, a much more direct and simpler process than finding them by calculating these infinite integrals. So if you can calculate the moment generating function, it makes it easier to find the moments. Uh, another thing is uh, you can use the moment generating function because there are results that relate to it and there gives you uh, some results on bounds uh, and so on. For example, there's the Chernoff bound and there's another video coming on the channel related to the Chernoff bound. Uh, there's one uh, result we can directly say here uh, is from Jensen's inequality. We have that the moment generating function is bounded by uh, the exponential by expected value of oh, sorry the exponential of e or e time to the power of mu t so this is a result from jensen's inequality uh, where we have some results that we know about the moment generating function which can be used in some uh, stochastic uh, calculations so this was the moment generating function it's a compact way to uh, be able to calculate all of the moments for a random variable, for the, the um, distribution of a random variable. So if you found this helpful, uh, give the video a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Subscribe to the channel for more videos and check out the links in the description below the video where there's a web page with a full categorized list of all the videos on the channel.